This is SEO and WordPress, killing it in 2012. There are two other SEO sessions going on right now, um, so this is more of a beginner session. So if you feel like you're an expert and you know all the plugins, this one probably isn't for you. But we will get started, that being said. My name is Casey Gillette. I am currently the Director of Online Marketing at Co-Marketing Associates, which is a real company. Um, we are based in Waltham, Massachusetts. I have been in the search industry for about seven years. Um, and I put this disclaimer up here because I do love SEO. I also love Twitter, so feel free to tweet me any SEO question, marketing question, etc., etc. Let's get started. So, I want to start with what's currently happening in the SEO industry. Um, if you've been paying attention the past year, you've probably heard that there's a lot of updates taking place, right? You're hearing all these crazy things about things that were working prior, are no longer working, um, blog networks, article syndication, penalized, over-optimization. Who knew you could even do that, right? So all of a sudden, these big companies and small companies alike are finding that this cute little penguin is shooting them right out of the index. Now, I don't want you to be too sad about it, too down, but there is good news, right? So despite this stuff happening, Google is giving us some information. Uh, you know, they're sending us email alerts if our site, if something isn't working right, if there's indexing issues. If you're doing something spammy, they're gonna tell you. They're also telling you these are the links we don't want, these are the links we do want, this is what you should be doing, this is the code you should be doing. They're giving you recommendations, right? So that information is there. Now, don't get me wrong, I still kind of think they're being jerks, but if they're gonna offer us this information, we might as well take advantage of it. And what it comes down to is the same thing that I've stood up here and said the last three years. Best practices still work. So what can we do? Well, first and foremost, you're here because you love WordPress. You're interested in SEO. So guess what? There's a great opportunity for you. 42 million results for WordPress SEO. There's a lot of crap out there that's going to tell you what to do. So. I'm going to cover, you know, what are some things that you can start implementing and some different plugins you can use to deal with these issues. When you think of SEO, even people who don't know much about it, they know title tags, they know keywords. And that's where we're going to start. Why? Because it still matters. This still matters. Putting title tags on your site is still important. Creating meta descriptions and putting on your site is still important. Keywords, eh, not important, but you can put them on there if you feel like it's going to help you. And this is why. When you're looking at a search result, that top blue line, that's your title tag. And that's what's going to people see in the search result, right? And that's what's going to drive them to click into your site over someone else's. Same thing, the description is the part below it. Now, if you're not writing good descriptions and you're not writing good tag title tags, Google will start putting them in there for you based on what they find on your site. You don't really want that, do you? I mean, you want to create the message and dictate the message. Just a few basics to revisit. Title tags between 65 and 70 characters. Still the same, hasn't changed in five years, 10 years. Try to include a keyword, don't stuff it full of keywords. Um, and in terms of putting your brand on there, I'm a huge advocate of that simply because it's a all right. <laughs> I'm not thinking of putting it at the tail end, um, simply because, <laughs> uh, you know, you want your main keyword and the main phrase at the beginning. We read left or right. Meta description, again, keep it under 170. Give them a good call to action. Why does that person want to visit your site? And make it easy to read. It should be pretty succinct, giving them a summary of what they're going to find on that particular page. So aside from title tags and keywords, when you're thinking about best practices, you're thinking about how is your site built, right? The site architecture, your URL structure, your robot files, what is your error condition? Are you, do you have duplicate content? And the list goes on and on and on. And all of a sudden, you're thinking of these words, and there's so many, and you don't know what to do, and you feel like Kevin from Home Alone. 
there's one solution to this. Yoast SEO plugin is by far the best plugin when it comes to SEO. It solves so many of these issues. It gives you your title tags. It gives you your meta description. But it also helps you analyze if, if you're doing something right. You put in a focus keyword, and it'll go through each page and tell you what is your score on this. It'll let you choose robots for each file, meta tags for each file. Your site map, your 301 redirect. It's awesome. This squirrel thinks it's nuts. <laughs> Along with those things, there's a few other best practices that are still there, still things you should be doing. Broken link checker. It's a cool plugin. And by the way, these are all plugins. They're all linked. Um, this presentation is up on my website, and I'll tweet it out, whatever. You'll be able to find it pretty easily. Broken link checker is the first one. So it'll actually tell you, are there any broken links on your site? Um, if you don't want a plugin for that, there's a couple tools you can use. Um, Screaming Frog is awesome. It's an awesome SEO tool. It'll basically scan your site, tell you what kind of issues you're having, redirects, broken links, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Smush it. It's an image optimization plugin. And part of this, this recent news and all the stuff that Google is telling us is that speed matters for your site. It's not really that new. We've all known it for a while but they're really starting to push it. And when they're showing sites, it's based on, is your site loading fast? And why is that? Because search results are now about the user. And if you, your site loads faster, it's a better user experience. You know, there was some crazy stat that I saw the other day that something like if your site doesn't load within three seconds, 70% of people leave. They'll abandon it. So it's super important to do everything you can to make sure your site's loading faster. That goes to the third one, W3 Total Cache. Really great plugin, good with site speed. Um, I know there's another one, Super Cache, but this one's really awesome, so I definitely recommend that one. And the last one on this is Google XML Sitemaps. What an XML sitemap does is you're essentially giving a data feed of your site to the search engines. And they just go through, has all the pages on your site, prioritizes them, and you're giving it to them, and in turn, they're giving the information back to you in Webmaster Tools. So if anyone uses Webmaster Tools, you basically just go put your XML sitemap in, and then they give you information on how people are getting to your site, how many backlinks, where are those backlinks, what landing pages are they on. They'll tell you your site speed. They'll tell you if you need to make it faster. There's a ton of awesome information in there. And this plugin just does that for you, right? It creates this XML sitemap for you, updates it so you don't have to worry about it. Definitely recommend getting it, or just at least at the minimum, have it just create one yourself. So, aside from these best practices, what the latest updates are really focused on, and what are really telling us is, it's about connections, and it's about relationships, right? So if there's one thing you take away from this session, it's this. SEO is now about relationships, and the relationships that you have with the sites around you. There's this whole thing about personalization happening. And I was at an SEO conference last month. One of the speakers said that every search you do is now personalized. It doesn't matter if you're signed in or not. It's based on your location, it's based on your connection, and it's based on your web history. So anything you're doing, you aren't seeing the same as someone maybe an hour down the road. Right? It's all different. So what does this mean? That old adage, sharing is caring, just became a lot more important. And so now it's up to you to figure out how can we get people to share our brand and share our site and share our content. And, you know, Jeff just gave this amazing presentation on how to create this content, and he talked a little bit about sharing it. And that's what it is. It's up to you to figure out how can we make this easy. The second part of that is that, you know, Google made this announcement that Google Plus, right? They're trying to force us all to use it. But it's because they want to give you results based on your connection. Bing teamed up with Facebook. So a couple weeks ago, they're showing us these results where if you're asking questions in Bing, your Facebook feed will come up. And people can actually answer your questions on there. So it's really important that you're now engaging on these different networks. A couple different plugins to encourage sharing, right? To make it easy for people to share your stuff. ShareBar is the first. So one up here, um, you'll see it on a lot of sites. It's typically on the side. It's pretty customizable. 
The second one is Shareaholic, and I think they're sponsors. So who is Shareaholic? Um, that's not why they're on here, though. They bribe me anything. The last one is Facebook comments. And part of the reason I put this on there is some of you may be thinking, like, oh, I don't want anything more to do with Facebook. I've heard enough about Facebook. But the fact of the matter is, like two days ago, they said people spend, on average, 400 minutes a month on Facebook. That is ridiculous. Apparently, we just don't have enough to do. So, but it's giving you this opportunity that by using this, putting Facebook comments on your site, people don't even have to leave the site, right? They don't have to leave Facebook. They're already logged in, so they're interacting on the site that they're already spending an enormous amount of time on. And it brings us to Google+. So I mentioned it a minute ago. Um, let me be clear. I think it's stupid. I hate being forced to use things that I don't want to use. I don't think it brings anything to the table. But if Google's going to tell me I should use something, I should use it, right? Because if that's going to help me in the search results, well, crap, I guess I better do it. There's this thing called Direct Connect. And not every site is eligible. You have to have, I don't know how they gauge it, but you have to have a certain amount of people visiting your Google Plus page. But it's really simple. And all you have to do is put a link to your Google Plus profile on your website, and then put a link to your website on your Google Plus profile. Right? So they're, you're telling them these two things are connected. And then that plus up there that you see, basically what happens is when you type plus before your search, a little drop down will come up with different Google Plus pages. So while you want to be driving traffic to your site, something worth doing. You know, and as we continue to talk about these relationships, right, I'm giving you these opportunities and these things to share, right? It's about sharing, I keep saying it's about relationships, and maybe that sounds stupid, you're in this session for SEO. But this is the new SEO. And so one thing when it comes to relationship is this idea of authorship and this idea of connecting with one another. So now you can tag things that say, I wrote this, right, or so-and-so wrote this. And in the search results, you see something like this, where it's someone's actual face, and it's telling you that they wrote it. And it lends some credibility. Um, Jeff mentioned in this uh, session for us, put an image with your anything you write. Right? People are more apt to click on it. So you see something like that, you're more apt to click on it. It also means that if I know you, if I'm connected with you through Google+, Plus or through Facebook, I'm more likely to see your result. So, you know, if someone I know wrote an article about SEO and someone I don't know wrote an article about SEO, Google thinks that I'd rather see the article from someone I know. And that's where this comes in. So there's a couple different plugins you can use to do that. Um, and there are these authorship plugins. And one is author, sure. Sorry, I have a hard time reading everything. Author share, and it lets you tag your posts with that rel author tag, right? So you can see a result if you just saw. The second one that I already declared my love for is Yoast, but if you're looking for just something, just an authorship plugin, AuthorShare will do it. If you don't want a plugin at all, you can simply add this tag to your blog header, and it, you know, this tag with the link to your Google Plus page. So pretty simple, pretty easy to do, and definitely worthwhile. So you're in this session about SEO, and you're probably expecting to hear something about link building. And I'm not going to talk about that because it's its own session all in itself. But what I am going to talk about, and sticking with this connection idea, is linking on your own site and linking to other people. So a couple different plugins to consider and tools to use. Zamanta is awesome. Uh, basically what it does is while you're writing a post, it gives you these things on the side that suggest images to use and links to use and where you should link things. Um, pretty awesome. And you know, we talk, we talk about sometimes linking to other people, right? And then letting them know you link to it and you're establishing this relationship with them. And you know, people like, people like when other people link to them. Smart Links is another one. Uh, basically, it will go through when you enable it. It will go through your site and cross-link different pages so that you don't have to. Um, personally, I like to add links myself, but if you are feeling lazy, I guess it'll do it for you. 
And the last one is yet another related post plugin. It's been around for quite a while. It's really awesome. And it'll keep, it basically adds related posts to the bottom of a current post. And it's really great because when people are coming in through search engines and through, you know, especially social tools, social networks, they're probably only there to read one piece of content, right? And what it's resulted in is these higher bounce rates. Because people aren't engaging and going, and they're not there to investigate. They're there to read one particular piece of content. But if you're giving them these other posts that they might be interested in, they're more likely to stay on your site, read another post, maybe read another post, and you know, increase their time on the site. So, the last thing I wanna cover you know, takes everything that we're talking about uh, and puts it into one place. You know, when you're doing all this stuff, you want to know how it's performing. You want to know if it's working. And that's Google Analytics. So if you're using Google Analytics, you know that there's a ton of information in there, your keywords, uh, every, I mean, content, top landing pages. You can now see how people are getting there through social, right? It'll show you conversions and so on and so forth. This is a plugin that's sort of uh, in addition to that. And it'll take things like how many people are leaving, clicking on a link, right? How many people are exiting on a link? Um, and it'll start giving you that data. If you want to set that up yourself in Google Analytics, you have to set up events and track page views, and it's really confusing. But this will do that for you. Um, and it really is this awesome. And this is actually the last tool that I have. Um, it's sort of new, I think it was, came out in like February or March. And what it does is it tells you where people are logged in when they visit your site. Now, I know a lot of people think, ah, you know, my audience doesn't use Facebook, my audience doesn't use Twitter. Well, maybe they do, and this will actually tell you that. So, this is the plugin. Again, it's links, and then if you go to it, you, you set it up through Facebook and through Google Analytics, and it's super cool, super easy to use. And I apparently talked a lot faster than I thought, because that is all I have. <laughs> 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 okay, I mean, I hate to say it, but if it's working for them, it's going to work for you. And so to start with the end in mind. So um, is there a tool? And then the other thing was, can you talk a little bit more about local search, local SEO? Sure, sure. So in terms of tools, SpyFu is kind of a cool one. It'll tell you like if your competitors are bidding on specific terms. It'll tell you like what keywords they're bidding on. Um, I know that Raven Tools is another one that really has a ton of stuff in it. Um, I don't know how much it gets into what tools or what other things your competitors are doing. I think it's more of a, you can look at that and figure it out, right? Raven tools? R-A-V, like, like, like the verb. Yep, R-A-V-E-N, tools. What's that? Uh, SpyFu, S-P-Y-F-U. It's also a good one. Um, I think, I, don't, I think they're both paid. I know that SpyFu has a free version. I think that Raven Tools has a free version, but Raven Tools is awesome. Um, SEO Miles, I don't know if ever anyone's familiar with it, but they offer a lot of really great tools. Um, Open Site Explorer will help you take a look at your competitors' backlinks, which is key, right, in, in figuring out, you know, what are they doing? Um, so it's Open Site Explorer, and basically you just put in their link and it'll tell you, you know, where are they getting links from and where are those links going to. Um, in terms of local SEO, that's a big thing, and it's a huge thing right now, especially around like the personalization, right? So it's really important that 
you're creating this the site that is specific to your location, and you're making sure you're using these keywords. Um, you know, a couple, I had this conversation with someone where it's like, go out there and like connect your chambers of commerce, right? Make sure you're being a part of and doing, connecting in local events, and sponsoring local events, and getting on these local sites. Um, making sure you're in lists and directories like Google Places. It's a huge thing. Google Places just, they took Google Plus, Google Local, Google Places, and I'll just put it in their Google Plus profile. So it's all right there. So that makes that even more important. Um, yeah, I think, is that, is that enough information for you? How do you feel about the platform called Yodel? Uh, I don't know too much about it, to be honest. Yodel's a big platform where they host your website. They're actually, it doesn't do much for your site, but they have so much inbound traffic, they're basically putting your website and cutting and pasting on their giant website that has a gigantic amount of in, inbound links. I don't think I like that. Um, you is, your, is it on your domain? But it's not your domain. Yeah, I don't know. That's why not. Right? So, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't sound like it. I mean, if you're going to create something local, right, create a page. Make sure that there's a directory that's specific to that thing. Yeah, I don't know. I can't speak to it, to be honest. Questions? More questions? Still have 20 minutes. <laughs> um, I came with one specific, well, one of a few SEO questions related to WordPress. Uh, I had a question written down by a notebook and I still don't have an answer yet. Um, how do you prevent SEO or negative SEO effects from duplicate content that's related to categories and tag pages? So if you've got tag clouds and categories, um, I had somebody say, hey, you know, we did a search for duplicate content using the tool. We found this. What are you going to do about it? Sure. So that plugin that I talked to that I mentioned, Yoast SEO, actually takes care of that. So within the settings, you can go and make sure that your category pages aren't indexed um, and that so you aren't having those duplicate content issues. Um, another one is all-in-one SEO pack does the same thing. So it's making sure that you're not creating those duplicate pages from the category, from the author, from the date folders. Um, I mean, you could theoretically just block it in your robots, I guess. Um, but the only issue with that is, depending on how your URL is set up, you know, if you have, if your URL contains all that data, then you're going to block that, which you really don't want. But um, if you just have the permalink settings set up so it's the title of your blog post and you're not pulling in those things, then you could just block that in your robots file. Or just add a, on those category pages, you could add a meta no follow, no index no follow. Hi, great talk, thank you. Um, <laughs> if, uh, if you're using Headspace or all-in-one SEO, is it easy to change to another SEO plugin? Yeah, is yeah, it's change? really easy. Do you have to look at all your other pages, or does it? No, no, it should keep the other stuff. Okay, thank you. Hi, is uh, optimizing a blog post on the same way as optimizing a page on a WordPress site? Yeah, absolutely. So within each blog post, you know, you have it's almost a two-level thing. You have your main site, which you're optimizing for, you know, maybe what the overall keyword is, or the overall product, or whatever. And then the specific post is optimized for whatever the topic is of that particular post. Um, so you always want to make sure that you're adding title tags, adding descriptions for your blog posts as well as your main site. Hi. Um, the Google Analytics plugin that you mentioned, is that from Google or is it made by somebody else? It's made by the same guy who makes the uh, SEO plugin. He's like amazing, seriously. Because <laughs> he's an SEO at heart, so you know, he's created these things to basically just make life easier. I have a question about over here. I have a question, what is the advantage of using a no-follow plugin on certain pages and not other pages? Sure. So it goes with, you know, you don't want duplicate content on your site. Maybe there's something that doesn't add any value, right? It doesn't add any value to search engines, doesn't have any value to users. Maybe it's like a login page, 
right? So there's nothing on it but that login. So you may say to you know, the search engine, look, I really don't need you to follow this. Um, I don't need you to index that. It. It's just for my users. There's no value to anyone in that. Um, what people were doing a couple years ago was trying to craft it. So like, they were trying to make sure that the link juice was going to the pages that mattered. So they were saying like, you know, no follow. Um, but that doesn't work anymore. So. Hey there, I sent you a balloon, did you get it? <laughs> anyway. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm doing a post tonight, you know, I'm using uh, SEO way of, and it's a love-hate thing because, you know, I get to the point where I've got green lights and I want to get them all green or as many of them green. And so my first part of my question is, you know, how, how much do I drive myself crazy every night? The second thing is, is I think I have a term wrong here, these kill words, um, buy, that, things like that. and. How important are they? And you know, because once once the URL is set for the post, then you then you're back to the leading and starting all over again. And that that costs me a lot of time. So. Uh, I wouldn't let it cost you that much time, to be honest. Um, you know, it's really what the post is about. You want to get across. You know, what is that post? And yes, you want like buy something, right? But at the end of the day, what you really want is what those target keywords are. So I would focus more on that than what the small keywords are. I mean, they're just kind of, you know, additives, right? Like making it read better. I have a question on uh, link building. Sure. Is it link building, links to your site still the most important thing for ranking? And how do you uh, promote more links to your site? Sure. Um, yes and no. Um, depending on, like I said, it's. It's all about connections, and links are a huge part of those connections. Um, but whereas before, you were out buying links and doing anything you could to get links from regardless of who it was, you can't do that anymore. So now you need to be focusing on getting links from real sources, um, creating relationships and partnerships with people, and using social media. Um, you know, I just actually moved back to an agency, but I was in-house prior. And Facebook was the number two source of links for us, right? And so that's a huge deal. And Google's telling you that, like that matters. Um, so links still do play a big role, but you know your site has to be clean. Before you're even worrying about links, make sure you have this clean site and you're doing everything you can to optimize it. All in one SEO versus Ghost, which one do you prefer and why? Um, I used to be a huge, huge all in one advocate, and I still like it, don't get me wrong. I just think that Yoast offers some more capabilities um, and is a little easier to figure out, um, especially when it comes to like the no-index stuff and the robot stuff. I'm not a development development genius. I'm not even an okay at it person. Um, so I think that it makes it a lot easier to figure out for you know, non-tech folks. Uh, what are your thoughts on having one versus multiple sites? So for example, a medium-sized business, there's an enterprise site that talks about the industry. Uh, the CEO and the CTO may want to be thinking about their own little blog sites. Uh, they might have a nonprofit side that wants to talk about something that's forwarded to that. So is it costing them more to have everything into one domain or splitting up into multiple domains? The only thing you're going to encounter when you split it into more domains is you're taking those three other ones or however many others and starting over. Right? So instead of having this one domain that has all these links pointing to it and people that already know the brand and are aware of the brand, you're splitting that up into four other sites who now have to gain that credibility. So, I mean, if you already have something that's working, I would just be adding different, maybe different sections of it. Okay, so you had mentioned that Keywords are not really relevant anymore, oh, and yeah. I have. Sorry. <laughs> no, I have. I get to explain that to my clients, so it'd be helpful to tell them why, so they're not <laughs> meta keywords. I'm sorry. Okay. Keywords? No. no. Yeah. Sorry, I forgot that. One. That's um, I mean, there's a couple of stories. Just Google, like meta keywords, Google meta keywords, Yahoo. They basically all said they don't pay attention to them. Um, so they can be used for internal search, so I know some people still use them for internal search, like blog stuff. Um, but for search, like search value-wise, all the search engines have said we don't we don't pay attention to this. Just because people used to stuff them, right? So they used to be 
keyword tags that were this long. So. Yeah. 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 Hi. We were talking about searches will be different for all kinds of different people. So if everyone in this room did a search on something, it would come up with different results. Theoretically. Theoretically. So if you're trying to check like how effective your keywords are to see how you're moving up. Yeah. So you can put in your keywords and see like, oh, on a thousand today and like tomorrow yeah. on 500. So yeah, if you are checking your rankings, and this is another thing, right, that as agencies we have a hard time saying because for so long it was, here's how your rankings are doing and we said, you moved up 20 spaces, awesome. But now what they see may not be what you see. Um, so there are some tools, like I mentioned, like SEO Moz has a ranking tool, Raven tools, SEO Moz. Um, and the tool that I mentioned, Raven Tools, they have a ranking tool as well. Um, you can try using the Chrome offers an incognito window. So it's supposed to take all that information, you know, your location and all that stuff and discount it. Um, doesn't perfectly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a tough issue. And even, you know, even I'm having a really hard time saying to people like, okay, take it with a grain of salt what they are, but don't put all your eggs in that basket. All right, so I have a question for really non-technical SEO people, oh, which I consider myself <laughs> to be. But, so if I was a solopreneur or a micro business or even, let, let me say, maybe I had a job, you know, sort of job, hobby thing that I do that I can make money. Wouldn't it be, make more sense for SEO to sort of find the communities that you're interested in become a part of them, help the people in them, because givers gain, pull them into your site, and then blog just as much as you can, since Google values fresh and relevant content. You know, it could, and I know for a fact that if you blog 25 hours a week, you'll get to the top of that, without learning all this yeah. mishigas. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> I actually have a couple friends who just started their own business, and they were kind of facing the same thing, right? We have this very limited budget, you know, they're bootstrapping it themselves, you know, where should we focus on? We want to do SEO, we know it's important, and, you know, my suggestion to them was just start writing, right? They built this site, it's optimized, they did basically all they could with it, but before you worry about all this other stuff, start writing, start, start getting out there and being involved with sites that, that are relevant to you, right? Like, their market is entrepreneurs and small businesses. So get out there in those communities. Go to events. And that's how you, you start building those things, and those links will start to naturally come. Uh, same thing, like, but it's about writing content in the meantime. All right, we have five minutes. Um, say I'm um, hired to redesign a site that is already highly ranked. Um, but they want new content and they want to move it to WordPress, so it's not a WordPress site yet. How do you maintain the ranking? Yeah, good question. Um, it's really about making sure that the site is being transitioned without losing any of that stuff. And so you need to make sure that any page that you're not using anymore is redirected properly to a page similar to it, right? And that every page on the first site is being 301 redirected to Similar, uh, similar page. Um, you can also use like, because I'm assuming that, mm, that's actually not the right thing. So you're not changing domains, right? You're just changing your install? Okay, yeah, but basically that, making sure that you're not losing anything that you have. Does that answer your question? A little bit, kind of vague, yeah. Um, uh, I am about the 301 redirect. Um, so, how long should you 301 redirect uh, if you have like static HTML and you're going to a WordPress site? Um, should I let, keep doing that for a month, a year, how long? Uh, if you're changing domains? No, keeping the domain, but um, all my pages that were HTML are now uh, WordPress, you know, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, ideally, you don't. If you don't have to redirect, you don't want to. But uh, in the meantime, I would keep them as long as you can. Um, make sure you change all the links that are pointing to that for the new URL. Um, that's the highest priority, but if you have inbound links coming to that, I would keep it up. 
All right, I think we can take one more question. Or we can just part ways. All right, thanks everyone.